let f be a function from the set of non-zero real numbers. We have the set of real numbers and we're taking away zero to the set of real numbers such that x, y times the quantity f of x minus f of y plus 2x is equal to x times f of x minus y times f of y plus 2y. We have a lot of symmetry going on here. We have x, y times f of x. We have another x, y times f of y. And similarly, we have x times f of x, y times f of y. And we have 2x on one side, 2y on one side. So maybe taking advantage of the symmetry may be one way of finding the solution. Anyway, this is going to hold for all non-zero real numbers x, y. So for every x, y in the domain of f, this identity is going to hold. We are also given this initial condition that f prime of 1 is 2018, and we wish to find f of 2018. And this is one of those problems where there are many different elegant ways of proceeding. But usually, when given a functional equation, one of the first things we try to do is to experiment by plugging in some values into x or into y or both and see if that simplifies anything, see if we can extract any quick and easy information from the functional equation with well-chosen substitution for x or y. And in this particular case, one substitution that may stand out to us is when y is equal to 1. Because when y is 1, we are going to have x times f of x on this side, we have x times f of x on the other side, so they are going to cancel. Is that going to give us any useful information? Well, we don't know until we try it out. So let's let y be 1, and this entire thing is going to become x times f of x minus x times f of 1, because y is 1, plus 2x is equal to x times f of x, minus 1 times f of 1, plus 2, and we see x times f of x are going away, and this equation is going to get us, when we factor out x from the side, x times negative f of 1 plus 2 is negative f of 1 plus 2. And we do not want this negative f of 1 plus 2 to cancel out because we want this equation to be true for all non-zero real x. So if this thing can cancel out, then we're going to get x has to be 1, which is a contradiction. This equation has to hold for every non-zero x, not just 1. And the only way that's possible is if negative f of 1 plus 2 is a 0, so this entire equation becomes vacuously true. 0 is equal to 0. So that's telling us f of 1 has to be 2. And where do we go from here? Well, I will actually show you two different methods of proceeding. The first one is to use another substitution, and this was the method employed by Ming Kongguyen, who was the very first person to correctly answer this challenge. And the second method, which I like just as much, is going to use the symmetry of the functional equation. And I do remark that the first solution is faster, but the second solution is also very elegant, very pretty, and I think it's educational as well. So let's start with the first solution using substitution. When we see what happened to our functional equation, how x times f of x were cancelling out when we plugged in y equals to 1, we naturally think what would have happened if f of x did not cancel out? Because if f of x did not cancel out, maybe we can rearrange this equation, solve it for f of x, and be done. Well, y equals to 1 wasn't doing it, but how about y equals to negative 1? Because in this case, we are going to have negative x times f of x, and here we are just going to have x times f of x, which are not cancelling out. So maybe we can actually find f of x if we substitute y equals to negative 1. And that's an excellent idea, so let's try it out. So when y is negative 1, we get negative x times f of x plus x negative x times negative 1 times f of negative 1 plus 2x is x times f of x plus f of negative 1 minus 2. And rearranging this equation, making sure everything with f of x is on one side, so let's move this over to the other side, getting us 2x times f of x, and let's move the rest of the things to the other side, is equal to x times f of negative 1 plus 2x minus f of negative 1 plus 2. And the dividing by 2x is actually going to get us f of x, which is f of negative 1 plus 2, 
over 2 plus 2 minus f of negative 1 over 2x. From here, the solution is easy. We know that f prime of 1 is 2018, and we just have to keep in mind that f of negative 1 is a constant. So let's differentiate this. f prime of x, well, when we differentiate a constant that goes away, and when we differentiate this thing, that's going to be f of negative 1 minus 2, the sign is going to switch over 2x squared, and because f prime of 1 is 2018, so f prime of 1, that's f of negative 1 minus 2 over 2, being 2018, that's telling us that f of negative 1 is a 40, 38. So that's another information we have, and this is actually sufficient for us to find f of x. f of negative 1 is 40, 38. So plugging 40, 38 into it gets us 40, 40 over 2, or 20, 20, plus 2 minus 40, 38, that's negative 40, 36, and divide by 2, that's going to get us negative 20, 18, and we have it divided by x. So we have shown that if there exists a function f of x satisfying this identity, along with this constraint f prime of 1 is 2018, then the function has to be the only possible function is 2020 minus 2018 over x. But we have not shown that this function actually satisfies our original constraint, and we do have to take our time to plug it back in to our functional equation and make sure it actually works. So this is the only possibility for f of x, and the left-hand side of this equation is going to become xy, times 2020 minus 2018 over x minus 2020 plus 2018 over y, I'm just taking away f of y, plus 2x, and 2020 are nicely cancelling out, and when we multiply by xy, we get negative 2018y plus 2018x plus 2x, which is 2020x minus 2018y. Now let's look at the right hand side of the equation. So let's go back up. So right hand side is going to become x times f of x. That's 2020x minus 2018 minus y times f of y. That's minus 2020y plus 2018 plus 2y. And we see that that's 2020x minus 2018y which is what we got on the left-hand side. So this function indeed satisfies our functional equation. So we have found the unique function satisfying all of these in the problem statement. So the only thing left to do is to find f of 2018, which is obviously 2019. So that's the end of our solution 1. So now let's look at the second approach, which is going to use symmetry. And we are going to start by rearranging this entire equation, so it looks even more symmetric than it already is. And this is how we are going to do it. We are going to move this x times f of x to the left side. So we have xy times f of x minus x times f of x. And we are going to move this xy times negative f of y to the right side. So we have xy times f of y minus y times f of y plus 2y. So I'm forcing the terms with x times f of x and y times f of y to be adjacent to each other. And let's actually factor out x times f of x from the left-hand side and the y times f of y from the right-hand side. So taking a look at this equation, we see that we have this factor y minus 1 and x minus 1, and we see that we can create another factor of x minus 1 and y minus 1 by subtracting 2 to both sides, because then we are going to have this 2 times x minus 1, and we are going to have this 2 times y minus 1 on the right. And it looks like dividing by x minus 1 times y minus 1 is going to get us that additional level of symmetry because we are going to have everything in terms of x plus 2 over y minus 1 is equal to y times f of y over y minus 1, everything in terms of y plus 2 over x minus 1. So I'm just dividing both sides by x minus 1 times y minus 1, and we are going to get this. And by moving 2 over x minus 1 to the left, 2 over y minus 1 to the right, we get f times f of x minus 2 over x minus 1 is y times f of y minus 2 over y minus 1 for all xy such that xy is not 0, 
that was in the problem statement or non-zero, and we also see they also cannot be one in this particular case. Now, realize that the left-hand side and right-hand side are basically the same thing. Left-hand side uses x, right-hand side uses y, but it's the same expression. So this is a very strong constraint that this has to be satisfied for all x, y other than 0 and 1. In fact, think of it like this, fix a value of y, who knows, like 2, such that this entire thing is a constant as x is cycling through all real numbers other than 0 and 1, we always have to get c. So that's telling us, in fact, that this entire thing has to be a constant for all values of x other than 0 and 1. So we know x times f of x minus 2 over x minus 1 is a constant, and that's telling us, rearranging it, f of x is a c times x minus 1 plus 2 over x, and and to make it easier to differentiate, we can even make it c plus 2 minus c over x. c times x over x is going to get us c. Rearranging the rest gets us 2 minus c over x. And once we get to this, we can differentiate it. Use the fact that f prime of 1 is 2018. And we should be able to find that c is actually 2020. And that's going to get us that our function is 2020 minus 2018 over x as we have seen before. And in fact, because f of 1 in this function is a 2, and toward the beginning of this video, we have proven that f of 1 has to be 2 if there is a function that's satisfying this. And because the f of x we found satisfies f of 1 is 2, we know that this function applies to every value of x other than 0, including 1. Anyway, once we have this, finding f of 2018 is easy, that's 2019, and we are done once again. So the answer to this question is 2019.